be honest. Who doesn't like superhero VFX? Nobody. So the concept for the video I'm gonna make is super simple. I'm going to have a standoff, kind of like cowboy style with my adversary, whoever or whatever that thing is gonna be. And it's gonna get a couple of different ang camera angles and then he's gonna make a move. Right, not a crazy move, but just a move. And then as soon as he makes a move, I'm gonna react Superman style, fly in, grab him by the neck and just slam him on the ground. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's very doable. Let's do it. So now that my concept is locked in and ready to go, I want to go inside Blender and do what's called pre -vis. This is an essential part of the pre-production process because I don't want to get to my film location and have to do any guesswork whatsoever. If you do have to do guesswork, you'll probably have to reshoot, you'll do a lot of thinking, and you'll just have to come up with ideas on the spot, which is doable, but it's not as efficient nor as fun because I don't want to do any thinking when I'm actually needing to film because I have to maintain the lighting and do all kind of stuff. So what I do is go inside Blender, get all my shots, get my entire shot list, compile that, export it, send it to my phone. So when I'm on my film location, I know exactly what I'm getting. Now, despite all rumors that I know have been circulating around YouTube, especially the VFX community, I don't have the capacity nor the ability to do anything superhuman like flying and choke slamming or any of that stuff. I know it's unbelievable, but it's coming from the source here. So what I actually have to do is get a digi double. If you don't know what a digi double is, you see it all the time, even if you know it or not. Think of Spider-Man, for example. Tom Holland, believe it or not, cannot do any of the Spider-Man tricks. But in the scenes that he is doing those things, it's not really him, but it's a model of him inside the Spider-Man suit. So he can do all the non-human, superhuman stuff that makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. So that's what I had to do for myself because I don't have the capability to do any flying or anything like that. So what I did was use a software called Character Creator with the Headshot 2.0 plugin and created a digi double of myself with accurate face structure, head shape, and skin tone. And with some finer detailing, I was actually able to get a pretty similar body type as well. After creating my own digi double inside of Character Creator, I took it to another software called iClone, which is under the same company that created Character Creator, and I was able to put animations on my character, which is super dope. And I actually came up with this nice fly choke slam, literally exactly what I was looking for, inside of iClone, which came out amazing. So you may be wondering, Isaac, everything looks great so far, but your digi double is not wearing any clothes. Do you have a special performance waiting for? No, I don't have a special performance. You're nasty for even thinking that. This is YouTube. So what am I going to do? Problem solved. I'm actually going to take my character and its animation into a software called Marvelous Designer. I know it's a lot of softwares. It took me a while to kind of, gosh, get this workflow together, but it's worth it for the end result. So like I said, I imported everything inside of Marvelous Designer. Here, I put a shirt on, I put some pants on. Yep, just a fun fact, you don't have to actually make clothes inside of Marvelous Designer. They do have a store similar to like Blender Market or CG Trader where you can purchase pre-made clothes and just import it onto your character. So that's exactly what I did. And I ran an entire cloth sim where I was able to get some realistic cloth simulation and cloth movement to import inside of Blender that way the realism is at its peak. After the cloth simulation is complete, I imported the character and the cloth simulation inside of Blender, made a couple test runs, and it actually came out pretty good. I did some scaling, and then I did some additional pre just to get a final look, or as close to the final look as I can get before I go out and film. So for my chosen adversary, I got a model off of CG Trader that I bought a super long time ago, and I imported it into a software called AccuRig. Now, this software is pretty simple to use, and I also promise it's the last software that I used. Um, it's still under the same company that creates Character Creator, iClone. This is the same thing. So it's pretty nice to have in a workflow. But AccuRig is pretty much a animation software and it's very similar to Mixamo. So all you have to do is upload the character and then pretty much put the points where it needs to go, just like Mixamo, so it can be rigged. And then after that, I took it into iClone, put the animations on the character. And then from there, I exported the animation and the character into Blender so I could have the final look inside of Blender. I didn't breathe during that whole explanation. 
but I hope you guys understood what I was talking about. Now, after all that said and done, I can finally start filming, which honestly is my least favorite part because I just like the VFX part, but it's a necessity. So I go outside to the chosen film location. And if you know anything about filming in public, it can feel very cringy to say the least, right? It's 5 p.m., 6 p.m. On like a Friday, I decided to go out of all days. So there's nothing but families and people just walking around the park. And here I am doing Lord knows what to all these people. It's like, dude, what is this guy doing? 6'4", <laughs> 6 dude in the evening with a camera jumping up and down, but it was for the greater good. And it's the shots we needed. And luckily for me, no reshoots were necessary. I got my footage, came back inside and hopped on Blender to actually do the final stage of things or the second to final stage of things. So now it's finally time to hop in Blender and match the lighting, the scale, and just make sure my scenes align so everything matches perfectly. So what I did was I got my footage, I made it as a background image inside of my Blender camera. And from there, I grabbed my adversary, right? My sci-fi object or character and made sure him and I were roughly the same size, right? Obviously I have my plane that I made a shadow catcher, so the shadows are perfect. And then I added an HDRI from Polyhaven, which had the same exact or very similar sky. And I matched the sun position to where the sun actually was when I was filming. That way the shadows aligned perfectly. And I did this exact same process for the rest of my shots before importing everything into DaVinci Resolve, where all the magic really happens to make sure everything is seamless between the CGI and the real footage. And with that being said, here's the final video.